the condition in the train was dreadful. It was, we were bumper to bumper, you were body to body. Uh, some people who died in the train couldn't even fall down because there was not enough room on the ground to, for them to fall down. I remember vividly a, uh, a, a young woman with a baby who didn't stop crying and uh, she tried to feed the baby but obviously she had no milk left or whatever and then the, the child was crying and screaming and then suddenly it stopped and we looked down and the baby was dead. They picked me up and asked me to see, to tell them what I can see from the window of the, of the compartment and I said, it, I read, I think it was Auschwitz Birkenau. And I, what else can you see? And I said, I can see a lot of smoke in the air. And, then, and I gave the explanation that these were the gas chambers. My sister Eva and I arrived in Auschwitz-Birkenau on the 3rd of November. 1944. We finally arrived in Auschwitz and we stopped and then we were pushed out of the train. It was very high up. You were pushed out, some people f uh, fell, were trampled, it didn't matter. And uh, we were met by German, uh, the Alsatian dogs, going completely berserk. Uh, to, and tr trying to get uh, get to the people to attack them. And um, finally, when they made a bit of order, they ordered us to, to line up. And if I remember correctly, they, they, we lined up and we were told to march behind, to start walking behind towards the gentleman at the end. And uh, then we were told by a young man, my sister was told, when you walk past the gentleman at the other end, who is Mengele, tell him, you are, how old are you? And she said, 13. And he told her, tell them that you are 16. So Eva was sent to one side, and I was whistled or pushed with a, uh, with a um, baton to the other side. And of course, I started crying because I was scared to be alone. And uh, somebody told us to, to go to, my, to each other. At one stage, we were finally sent together into the same barrack. We were first sent to the, what used to be the original women's camp on the left of, of the entrance from the Rampa. And the men and women were still together for a little while. And we were, as soon as we arrived, we were called out and we were given a pep talk. One cough, your death. One Laos, your death. And this was in a place where all the clothes, we hadn't got yet the clothes yet, but all the clothes that we were given subsequently could stand up by themselves because they were so full of uh, lice. And how could you not get a cough in a place where it's so cold and you've, you're walking with rags, if you were lucky, with rags on your feet in snow. And. Uh, so that was extracurricular sadism to tell, to, to frighten, to put it mildly, the hell out of you. And um, I had long plaits and I got worried that I, of course that I'm going to have lice in them very quickly. And so Eva found some, from somebody something to cut my plait off. She managed to cut my first plait off and then we were called on sale appel. So she, I had to go out like that. And then she managed to find whatever, somebody gave her some a scissors or something to cut the second plate off. This was just an introduction. Um, some days later, we don't know how long it took, we were told to go to the other side of the camp, across on the other side, across the uh, sewer that was running, open sewer was running through the camp the whole time. And it had a bridge across it, or rather not a bridge, it had just uh, uh, planks of wood on it, and two guards were, mark, uh, were guarding it. Uh, suffice it to say that they were laughing and I said, one of them said, let's make, have a bit of fun. I'll throw the, push the small one to, into the sewer and we'll have a bet how long it takes her to sink. 
And even though we understood what they said, we weren't, we couldn't, we weren't in a position not to go because once you were told to do something, you had to do it. So, and true to them, to, uh, to their threat, as we got onto the bridge, one of them pushed me into the sewer. I didn't drown only because it, the sewer was, excuse me, too thick to actually sink in. And a young boy, inmate from on the other side of the camp, against the rules, jumped into the sewer and pulled me out. Then they t took me ho back to the left side and they gave up their morning coffee, which is all that I got, to, to wash me off because we didn't have any water to wash me off with. After that, at some stage, we were told again to go to the other side. At one stage, we were tattooed. Uh, once you were there, it was very difficult to, to keep track of what, what was happening. Uh, we were tattooed at one stage. I remember starting to cry because it's a very deep tattoo. It's not a superficial one. And uh, somebody was holding my, me, my hand to make it taut. And I was crying, and the person who was a Jewish who was tattooing me, I remember distinctly, said to me, don't cry, because if you're getting a tattoo, that means they'll keep you alive at least one week. So don't cry. 